we often think that the closing the gap, the Indigenous issue, is sort of out in remote Australia. Well, it's not. There are no. you know, tens of thousands of uh, Indigenous people living in, in every capital city. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of attitude. It's just a matter of, you know, as Peter's trying to say, to, to recognise that there is actually something we can do. And uh, when we flick the switch and say, well, what can we do and ask that question, um, some of us may feel called, especially if our businesses happen to have something to do with remote parts of Australia to engage there. But, you know, for most of what Macquarie does, you know, we do it in urban Australia, uh, if we're talking about Indigenous stuff. I think actually that what would be good is for the business community to um, not see the various fair trade organisations as threats and nuisances and irritations, but actually to encourage the movement because ultimately what we actually need is depth in those various markets. Uh, when I spoke to the NAB person privately, you know, clearly they weren't going to go there unless they could be satisfied that they could actually get the uniforms um, on a fair trade basis without paying too much of a premium. It gets back to what we talked about just a minute ago. You can't just be a charity and pay um, an inappropriately high dollar for, uh, you know, the privilege of being fair trade. But I think once the, the movement starts to get, um, you know, into gear, if you like, and uh, the depth in those fair trade markets starts to occur, then actually it becomes uh, quite okay. straightforward.